Hello YouTube, Custoda here. I'm exhausted, tired, I'm blistered, helping people consistently because everyone's learned to rely on me. Anyway, today we've got, let's see, the Dragon Zord versus Mecha Godzilla. I'm excited about this. I don't know that much about, I don't know anything about Mecha Godzilla. Uh, Dragon Zord, though, I know crap tons about, but only the stuff I can remember when I was watching as a stupid little kid, an idiot. Oh my god, I was stupid. Anyway, excited. Let's watch this Dragon Sword. I really want the Dragon Sword to win, but let's see who wins. And I'm still recording and starting up. Whether they are benevolent deities or harbingers of doom, dragons are freaking awesome. They are. Hell yeah! Especially Ridley. the robot kind. Like the Dragon Zord, piloted by the Green Power Ranger. And Kiru, the dangerous and mysterious Mecha Godzilla. Kiru? He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a Ooh, 3D death fight. battle. After being stuck in a garbage can for 10,000 years, the evil oh. Rita Repulsa was understandably pretty pissed. So, she decided to destroy the world. Hey, I'd be mad too. But that's a hell of a hot take. And so Earth's guardian, Zordon, put a plan into motion. Five heroic teenagers would defend the planet with their dinosaurs. They were the Mighty, Mighty Morphin, Morphin Power, Power Rangers. Rangers. You'd think a bunch of kids in the would have a tough time fighting an ancient witch, but they got used to taking out her weakly monsters pretty quick. Like a normal <laughs> uh, nine to five. Oh, uh, the putties. Just with giant robots. But Rita had a plan. If I met the Black Power Ranger at a Comic Con. Heroes, she would create her own ranger. The Green Ranger, along with his robo reptile, the Dragon Zord. <laughs> uh. Oh, that was awesome. At 90 meters tall and nearly 200 tons, the Dragon, Dragon Zord Power proved Coin. a match for the other rangers, even their Megazord. Dragon Zord's got Built a over heavy 10, duty arsenal, years like ago. finger missiles. It's like flicking the gunk from under your nails at people, but it explodes. Why do you have gunk under <laughs> your fingers? To flick at people. Duh. <laughs> that fin isn't just a cool headpiece. It shoots energy waves. And if D Zord feels like stomping around, watch out for literally shocking earthquakes. Oh, damn. Despite such long-range weaponry, the Dragon Zord seems best suited to fighting up close with its strong grappling arms and highly flexible drill tail. This drill is so impressive, Detail it cut through a cocoon prison even the supposedly superior Megazord couldn't escape. Stop. Yeah, that thing's five Zords in one! Guess teamwork doesn't always make the dream work. The Dragon Zord's pilot has even bested the other rangers in combat on his own. Oh, they're gonna do that. It helps him break like, free from Rita's control, and he eagerly joined their fight against the forces of evil. Is he gonna be able this to, uh, you is know, Tommy is Oliver. Mac Tommy Megazord gonna be able to copy his movement? Street. This guy is an expert martial artist and super dedicated to ranger work. So much so, he kept wearing the tights for years and even mentored other teams. Oh, he right. summons and controls the Dragon Zord with the Dragon Dagger by playing it so like that a. So that was Americans. Wait. Are all of knives secretly flutes? Go They've Kaijers. never, uh, not been flutes. Oh my god, really? Wait a minute, why didn't this come up in poultry science class? Chickens don't like music? How stupid do you think I am? Chickens love music! <gasps> That's what they mean by a sharp note! As the Green Ranger, <laughs> Tommy draws it. power from a universe-spanning energy called the, the Morphin, Morphin grid. grid. His grid connection powers the Dragon Zord, too. He's a superhero and a battery. Though like most other Zords, enough damage can disrupt the Dragon Zord's connection to the Morphin Grid and take it down for good. But good luck trying. The Dragon Zord is super strong. It made short work of Rita's monsters and even beat the Megazord, which has an average power output of 50,000 megavolts. That's the same kind of power as a nuclear warhead. Oh, the damn. Megazord was strong enough to punch a 10,000 oh, ton monster I remember about that. 40 meters off the ground. A punch worth 90 million newtons of force. The Big D can even fly past escape velocity and reach the what? moon. That's over 30 times the speed of sound. The Dragon Zord is also extremely durable, possibly more so than any other individual Zord of its generation. The Megazord once threw it into this mountain, which shattered. By comparing the known size of Dragon Zord's foot to said mountain and applying the energy necessary for violent fragmentation against rock, 
We determined the destructive force to be worth more than 350 tons of TNT. 356 tons. Damn. I remember this time. The held its own against the upgraded the moon, Thunder Megazord, and, and even one shot the White seven. Tiger Zord, which was supposed to be its better in yeah, every survive. way. While it's unlikely the Dragon Zord could actually defeat the Thunder Megazord on its own, it certainly stands a chance with its ultimate form. That's right, Ooh. it's got a semi-megazord mode of its own. While each Power Ranger has their own sword, there's been a few times the when a Ranger has called on other swords. Despite not to buy okay, the so practice, they're giving them that. With theirs. And so, Tommy can summon the Mastodon, Triceratops, and Sabertooth Tiger Zords to form Dragon Zord Fighting Mode. Or Battle Mode. Or Dragon Megazord, he never really settled on a name. Well, really? it's mighty powerful and turns its tail into a drill Battle spear that Dragon kills Megazord. basically everything in one shot. Mm -hmm. Power Seriously, staff and fin laser. it never lost a battle against anything Rita threw at it. So, uh, why don't they always use that? And Rita's magic is devastating enough to obliterate an entire floating island. Sadly, Tommy okay. would lose his control of the Dragon Zord when he lost his powers to his one weakness. A magic candle! Oh no! Look out for slowly dripping wax! But powers or no powers, Tommy kept fighting the good fight, eventually regaining his original morphin abilities with the Master Morpher. Perhaps one day, the Dragon Sword will rise again. Dragon Sword! Aw, really? So... I don't, I don't remember that much of Power Rangers. I watched it the year consistently, was 1954. got all the toys, but I can't remember Less than that a much. decade after Japan was bombarded with the first atomic oh, weapon, right. the yeah. nuclear age had begun. But one of these atomic weapons woke something up. Godzilla! <laughs> this ginormous radioactive kaiju decimated Japan. Things yeah. looked pretty bad until a scientist deployed a bomb strong enough to kill the monster. The Oxygen Destroyer, which does exactly what it says on the tin. Right, Dr. Serizawa's bomb could specifically target and destroy oxygen molecules, liquefying most living tissue. This weapon was oh. so dangerous, Serizawa feared its very existence threatened the entire human race. So he went down martyr style, taking out Godzilla and all knowledge of his weird bomb. All that remained was Godzilla's bones. Probably for the best. Still, a weapon like that might have come in handy when, a few decades later, another Godzilla showed up. Surprise, <laughs> bitches! Wait, it was another Godzilla? Turns out, Japan had been the target of many different types of kaiju for years, and had developed an anti-monster defense force to combat them. Unfortunately, their super powerful maser cannons barely even scratched this new Godzilla. I <laughs> just look at him. I didn't even care. Like the oxygen destroyer before, Japan needed a new weapon to combat Godzilla. They gathered their foremost experts in the fields of robotics, microwaves, low temperature physics, and someone whose work can only be described as cyber necromancy. Together, these leading scientists developed a revolutionary weapon like nothing before it. Mecha Godzilla! Sure, technically this isn't the first Mecha Godzilla we've seen, but it's certainly the deadliest and the most unique. So much so, okay. it was given its own distinct name, Kiru. A combination of Kiru. kanji meaning machine and dragon. Here you machine dragon. That's lame. I'll stick with Mega Godzilla, thank you. Standing Trophy 60 meters DNA tall computers. and weighing 40,000 tons with life full two gear, hours? this badass Damn. cyber monster is loaded with all sorts of weapons. Rocket launchers, rail cannons, grappling mm -hmm. wires, spinning drill mm -hmm. hands, a battering ram jetpack, and even zero retractable cannon? Assassin's Creed blades with an extra zap. Nice. And just like Zilla himself, Mecha G fires laser beams from his mouth. This twin maser cannon is twice as powerful as the maser guns that successfully killed other non-Godzilla giant monsters. Kiru is certainly skilled in melee combat and is surprisingly athletic for its size. Look yeah. at it go! However, with its Dang. enormous arsenal, it is far better suited to long-range strikes. Like with its ultimate weapon, the Absolute Zero Cannon. Damn! So, it's so like one's good at long range, speed. one's good at close As range. As the name suggests, it unequivocally brings its target's temperature to absolute zero. Oh, it is a zero freezing Kelvin. cannon. But this beam isn't just freezing its target, it's literally destroying all of its existing energy at once. A practically impossible feat of physics. Yeah, that This results does in crushing impossible. the entire target that defies from Newton's at an atomic law. level. Is that Newton's third Oh law? my god, Zilla! Uh, speaking of which, Kiru oh, God, is I'm actually stupid. built around the skeletal remains of the original Godzilla. 
giving them all the size and strength of the King of the Monsters. Oh. So it's kind of like they're pulling off a robotic weekend at Bernie's with old man Godzilla's bones? Amazing. Kiru also <laughs> utilizes biochemical and molecular-based DNA computers, which are actually based on real-life experimental technology. This infused Godzilla's own DNA to improve operation speeds and give Kiru subconscious motor control, sort of a simple AI, which lets it perform some limited actions on its own, exactly like my own Cyber Goose. With the skeleton of a goose and some extra parts I had lying around, I say he's a masterpiece of modern <laughs> science. Well, he's got two heads now, so do we call him a goose or a geese? It's a goose. Just one goose. But two heads make two goose, therefore a geese. It's a goose! <laughs> oh yeah, this version's much better! Kiru is piloted by Lieutenant Akane Yashiro, a longtime member of the Anti-Megalosaurus Force, and oh. your standard self-loathing anime protagonist. She thinks she's worthless because she has no parents and accidentally got some of her friends killed. So now nobody really likes her, which is, uh, real bummer. But hey, cheer up, lady! You get to fight giant lizards! Oh, so it's piloted? Killer robot, and that's freaking awesome! And Japan let Akane a woman pilot? No, that's, pilot from within that's kind of Kiru, progressive. But rather from a nearby jet plane the AC-3 White Heron, oh. which can fly over 900 kilometers per hour. Under Akane's control, Kiru has battled Godzilla several times oh, and she's... always came out on Still top. Piloting. But plot twist, Akane isn't Mechagodzilla's only pilot. It turns out there's someone else behind the controls, a ghost in the machine. Oh. It's the spirit of the original Godzilla. Surprise again, bitches, it's Ghost Robot. <laughs> the DNA mind of Godzilla can wrestle the mech from Akane at any point causing her to lose complete control. Giving the king another chance to trash Japan again! Ah, uh, always fun to relive the good old days. Though it is strongly implied Akane and Kiru came to an understanding of sorts, realizing that they were each shadows of a tragic past struggling to find purpose in life. Like college roommates. <laughs> Regardless of who is steering the ship, Kiru is an extremely tough machine. Oh. He's lifted and thrown Godzilla around like a sack of potatoes, and this version of the Big G weighed 25,000 tons! Kiru nice. actually survived being at the epicenter of its own absolute zero blast, and multiple direct hits from Godzilla's atomic breath attack. Oh. Which is even strong enough to overpower the absolute zero! Kiru is even fast enough to dodge the atomic breath, which, based on this instance you where an older like Mechagodzilla forced doesn't. the beam into space, from likely travels Russia faster than Mach 2 speeds. Okay, Kiru nice. itself could also fly from Alaska to the middle of Time Russia while carrying minutes. another kaiju in just a few minutes. Given how quickly Kiru's fuel burns in flight, in order to make it, Kiru was likely flying around Mach 40. But okay. that's sadly the Mecha Monster's biggest flaw. Its battery life is worse than the goddamn Nintendo Switch. <laughs> While the White Herons can use microwave tech to recharge Kiru on the fly, a full charge only runs for about two hours at most. Okay. And using more intensive features like jet flight and the Absolute Zero Cannon drains it much, much faster. In fact, just one use of the Absolute Zero drains 40%. But who Damn. cares when he's so badass he can tear you apart in just a few minutes. With all this power at his metal fingertips, this is one epic machine. No man or beast stands a chance against the might of Mecha Godzilla. Kiryu, All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. Okay. All right. Um. Honestly, it seems like Mecha Godzilla could overpower Dragon Zord, but Dragon Zord has never once had that issue with power. And if this was a prolonged fight, yeah, the Dragon Zord has taken a lot of crap, and he's definitely got a lot more attachments. One's good at long range, one's good at short range, but even the one that's good at short range is still pretty good at long range. And if they did fight short range, then that would mean probably mean that Mecha Godzilla would be able to survive longer. You know what? I'm going with what I want. Uh, let's see. This is going to be a new streak. You know, since I was wrong last death battle, and Lobo lost. A lot of people thought Lobo would win, even me. All right. So I want Dragon Zord to win, and I think he'll win. It's time, time for, for a death, death battle. battle! Oh, and dragons. 
with dragons. They're T-Rexes, honestly. I don't know why we're calling them dragons. Fart! Oh, we're just getting right into it. No slight intro, no... We're not gonna get shown the reason. Okay. Can you get get nice work, Dragon Sword. Let's crush this tin can. Wait, did, are they even aware? Oh crap, he's bigger. Is he bigger or is his feet just big? Oop, Assassin's Creed blades. Oh. Let's play this smart. Oh, drill tail. They didn't even play the theme. The knife theme. Ooh. I didn't know he could do that. Okay. Oh no, you don't. Alright, shockwaves. They're both pretty mobile. Oh, and he's got backup. Has the... Have any Power Rangers ever had to deal with a small fighter? Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Is she dead? Oh, here's Godzilla. Come on, Dragon Zord. <laughs> Come on, fight back, fight back. Missiles. He seems. Oh, he's still got a second form. He could definitely toss. This isn't working. We need more power. There's the theme. Are those the original models Come from the together. Voltron fight? I'm loving this thing. Fighting mode, powered up and ready for action. Let's finish this. Fighting mode. You now, Mecha Godzilla could have probably won if he just didn't let him transform like every other person in Japanese anime. Come on. Mech still got some power. How long has this fight been going on? I mean, relative to them. Oh, it's really mobile. Who's more mobile? He's still fighting? Jesus! He's bringing him close. Oh no! Pull back! Pull back! Can he survive? And I was wrong again. <laughs> still awesome. Oh my god. I was wrong again. KO! Oh man, yeah. talk about a close one! Finding the victor here wasn't easy. Both have performed amazing feats of strength and durability, and both wielded massive arsenals of unbelievable devastation. Akane definitely proved herself fighting Godzilla a few times, though Tommy did have way more experience piloting mechs and fighting monsters for years and years. Plus, he's a freaking superhero. But while skill and experience are incredibly important, it doesn't always triumph over raw power. That's what she said. <laughs> Compared to Kiru, the Dragon Zord was rather lightweight, with far less impressive feats of strength. Yeah, well, Dragon Zord Apparently, could match the Mega Zord, who could lift a 10,000 ton yes, monster. Mega Godzilla scary. tossed around a 25,000 ton Godzilla, right. more than double the weight. Mega G certainly had the advantage up close. And also from a distance. Kidru's arsenal was overall better suited to long range combat thanks to a wider assortment of missile and beam weapons. Right. Simply put, Kidru possessed more options for controlling and ending this fight. Like how they both had instant kill moves, but only one of those depended on getting right up close. 
Plus, while fighting mode's max power wasn't too clear, it could compete with the Thunder Megazord and Rita herself. Remember how Rita blew up an island? Right. Easily one of the most impressive destruction feats in the Ranger's early years. Based on this image, we can measure the exact scale of the island. To blow that shit up, you'd need a blast of at least 2.6 gigatons of TNT. So Dragon Zord's Ultra Drill Stab was likely in the same ballpark in terms of power output. However, this pales in comparison to the Absolute Zero Cannon. Here, it's destroying the real-life Prince Hotel New Tower and several surrounding buildings. Using the known scale of these structures, the energy output to destroy them must equal 128 teratons of oh. TNT. That's okay. uh, over 49,000 times more powerful. And, and don't others forget, have been frozen. Megaji once survived being in the middle of this blast. There was oh. no way Dragon Zord could put down this tough son of a Zilla. Dragon Zord's arsenal and Tommy's skill certainly made this an intense match, but they were clearly outclassed by Kiru's awesome power and unwavering durability. I'm just glad they didn't let the fight drag on. <laughs> the winner is Kiru. Uh, Mecha Godzilla! Mecha Godzilla! I like that name. Hey, thanks too. for watching this episode. If you want the okay, battle music next? for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link in the description below. Who's next? Who's next? Check who's out next? On the right next? side who's of the screen next? next to Ben. You can watch more stuff. There's nothing on the screen. Was that Naruto? What's. Wait, Sasuke? Versus that guy from Yu Yu Hakusho? Versus Hit. Oh, what? Who is that? No! Go back! the link down below and and you went ah oh, god damn it rooster teeth uh all right that was oh uh, once again i'm wrong I'm, I'm not that torn up about it though i can understand how they would lose just like how i can understand how ben 10 wouldn't win against green lantern if you just read the stuff that comes after uh anyway that was it uh next time is going to be that uh, i couldn't read his name but sasuke I'm sure everyone's going to go crazy for Sasuke because everyone loves emos. See you next time.